second, and then uh, we'll start it up. Welcome to the first episode of the Great Pangas game. The bleh, I don't need to read the fucking comments. The Great Pangas backlog. Uh, we're gonna play Trauma Center Second Opinion, which you all know because that's why you're here. Increase the microphone volume. So that should help with being able to hear me. I want to make 100% sure that things are good. And then we'll get going. Okay. Let's go. It's gonna be a little awkward. Let's see if I can bring this out a little bit. This is the first time I've tried using a Wii to stream. So it'll be we've got a really weird setup right now and I realize that I I need something I need a, a Bluetooth dongle for my television so that I can use my Bluetooth head, headset instead of or headphones instead of these little earbud doodlies but that's all right we're gonna make it work turn the remote on The patient's lives are in our hands. Let's go. Let's see. There should be a way to split it. Controlled with the nunchuck style. Oh, yeah. Nunchuck style. Let's go. Why is there a trailer before the game starts? Alright. I was gonna I was gonna sit and let us watch the whole thing, but I can't. We'll just do normal. We're not gonna we're not trying to do anything crazy here. I didn't realize I had data already. Oh, good, it's fictitious. Hope Hospital. Episode number prologue. This is Hope Hospital, located in downtown Angeles Bay. Since its inception, Hope has selflessly served the community. Hope. Cringe. One of the newest doctors here is still in need of guidance, but he strives to improve out of an earnest desire to help people. Dr. Derek Stiles will soon come to realize his full potential. Standard procedure. Operation Rank. A new episode is available. You may now continue the storyline. You can also select your difficulty mode with the Z or C buttons. Okay. 
Chapter 1, Dr. Styles. Standard Procedure. Hope Hospital, Consultation Room. The patient has been moved to the pre-op area. Mary Fulton, age 39, Hope Hospital's veteran surgical assistant. She's kind and well-liked, so nobody mentions she tends to ramble too much. The injury is located on his forearm, and he's still fully conscious. We should be receiving blood test results from the lab any minute now. It looks worse than it is. He's not in any real danger. You might say he got lucky. Dr. Greg Castle, the head of Hope Hospital's surgical department. He's not easily rattled, but he's strict and expects perfection from his subordinates. You'll be operating, Derek. I will. Derek Stiles, age 26, an inexperienced surgeon, and the story's main character. He just completed his residency and accepted a position at Hope Hospital. I was just about to start my round, so... Worry about that later! You're not an intern anymore! Hurry up and prep for the OR! Dang, calm down. This is a simple extraction procedure. There's nothing to worry about. Just take your time, stay calm, and keep it steady. You should be able to handle this on your own by now. Lacerations in foreign objects and upper right brachium. Requires removal of the foreign objects and suturing of any wounds. Name, Kevin Turk. 165 and height of 73.8, whatever that is. Let's begin the briefing. Our patient, Kevin Turk, just arrived in an ambulance. He lost control of his motorcycle and crashed through a glass door. He received a number of lacerations, which have begun to hemorrhage. There are glass fragments lodged here, in his right forearm. Our cosmetic surgeon is out at a medical society meeting. But you should be able to handle the stitching. It's fairly straightforward. You do it, then. There are two main objectives in this operation. Suture any lacerations. Extract fragments of glass from underneath the patient's skin. Be thorough and try your best not to leave any scars. Starting the operation. Okay, let's begin the operation. Ho! Oh. Oh. Patient's loop. Let's begin. We should start with those lacerations. Take the stitching needle to suture those wounds. Suture in a zigzag pattern. Good work. Of course, this is only a basic surgery skill. Of course! Good yeah! Well. well done! The lacerations have been taken care of! Next, take your forceps. We need to remove that glass. Direction. Grip the glass fragments by talking with both by uh, oh my gosh talking. Grip the glass fragments by pressing with both fingers A and B. Once you have hold of one, slide it out. Place the extracted fragments on the tray. Now extract the other one. That's good. All visible glass has now been extracted. We need to take care of those smaller wounds now. Take the antibiotic gel. That's the one. Gently apply over the wound. Amazing, isn't it? Medicine has come a long way. This gel can actually cure small injuries immediately. <laughs> what? In the past, cure all ointments were just gimmicks and scams. But somebody finally created a real one. Oops, I shouldn't be talking so much. Let's continue. Some glass shards are embedded in the patient's arm as well. We'll need to extract those. Make an incision in his upper epithelium. Don't forget to disinfect the area beforehand. Use the antibiotic gel. Let's move on. Now make an incision. Remember to be careful. Alright. Dr. Styles. We can't let them get infected. We need to work quickly.
Treatment complete. Let's close it up. Dr. Styles. Oh yeah. Oh, such good stitches. I'm the best. Let's move on. That's good. All right. Now we apply the bandage. Which you only need to use in specific instances. You pick them up once I have placed them on the tray. Good job, Doctor Styles. Yeah. Make sure you review what we went over today when you have the chance. Four cools. Oh yeah. I am four cool. I don't care. See, you're catching on quickly. That wasn't so hard, was it? I couldn't have done it without my lovely assistant. I can definitely see improvement, but flirting isn't everything. Seriously though, keep practicing and you'll do just fine. Yo, does she want it? <laughs> Learning the ropes. Let's go. Episode number two. Judging from the MRI, the tumor is isolated in his stomach. It's benign, but you should be prepared for anything. Any questions, Dr. Styles? Huh? Oh. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks anyway. Are you even listening? I know you're stressed, but this is just so happens to be your job. Are you getting enough sleep? You need at least six hours a night. I'm sure they went over that in med school. These patients are depending on you. Derek, don't forget our follow-up appointment with Mr. Jenkins this afternoon. Have you read the report? I haven't, actually. You need to shape up. This is real life. We aren't playing games. <laughs> You've been here three years, Derek. We shouldn't still have to babysit you. Three It's been three years? Already? This might be grounds to open and investigate. <laughs> the impaired medical and social development of Dr. Derek Stiles. Oh, she's, she's being a turd. All right. Harsh, cut me some slack, Mary. You're not a resident doctor anymore, Styles. You know that. By the way, Mary, I spoke with Dr. Hoffman. Thank you very much. Wait, you spoke with the director? About what? Don't worry, it's none of your business. It's a personal matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. Are you going on vacation or something? I wouldn't mind a nice long cruise myself. Lounging in the sun, the sea stretching. Okay, okay, that's enough. We have an operation to perform. Tumor confirmed at the surface of the stomach. It should be removed before it becomes malignant. Today, we need to exercise a tumor in the patient's distal stomach. Two years ago, tests indicated that it was small and benign. However, it's grown rapidly and started to hemorrhage. At this rate, it might become malignant. After talking with Mr. Lorry. Mr. Lorry. Mr. Hugh Lorry. We've decided to remove it. There is one objective in this operation. Excise and remove the tumor in the patient's distal stomach. That is all. But you'll need to remove the tumor using the Powell procedure. First, drain the tumor's cytoplasm to decrease its size. Then once you excise it, the cells can't metastasize, resulting in a smaller incision. There seems to be a trend toward this type of removal. It's a good idea for you to learn it. Now, begin the operation. Stay calm and keep it steady. Starting the operation. Understood, let's begin the operation. Microphone down. Let's cut him up. Let's begin. 
This will be a laparotomy. You'll need to open up his abdomen. You've done this before, so there's no reason to be anxious. Let's begin. Disinfect the area and make your incision. Cool. Dr. Styles. We're gonna treat a tumor, but hmm, his vitals are dropping. You need to use a syringe. Let's stabilize his condition. Insert the ball first. That's good. Inject it into the area. Dr. Styles. Vitals are stabilized. Now we can begin. At first glance, it appears that nothing is wrong. However, yesterday's test revealed something in the patient's lower stomach. We'll need to use the ultrasound to find the problem area. And activate it by pressing the B button. You will notice that infected areas shot oh, almost to outside of it because the ultrasound was too far away. Scan directly over the tumor and turn invisible from its sponsor. Expert doctors can perform this operation without the benefit of visual aid. But you should take a moment to confirm the shadow before we Let's get forward. Move on. Okay, that's right. Hmm, this is definitely a problem. Now we'll expose the tumor. Dr. Styles. Pretty big. Looks like we did it just in time. As Dr. Castle explained earlier, we'll be using the power procedure. Use the drain first. Pick it up. Keep it steady. That's good. But cytoplasm will continue to ooze out if we don't do anything. Excise it with the scalpel before that happens. You did very well. All right. Let's get that out That's of there. That's good. We'll find synthetic membrane to stop the thing. Boop. Dr. Styles. Treatment complete. It's made of protein, so there's no chance of tissue rejection. I think it's blended in nicely. It should heal up perfectly. Now suture the incision. Boop, 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 boop. Cool. Keep going. Yeah, be rank. Eat that, Mary. Eat it, Mary. Nice work, Derek. You really took your time and did things right. Just remember that the patient's safety always comes first. You're getting better every day. Keep up the good work. Oh, yeah. A farewell. <gasps> What's going to happen now? Hope Hospital, Nurses Station. And so, since my husband's been relocated to a different office, I'll be leaving Hope Hospital effective immediately. No two-week notice or anything. I'm really going to miss this place and all the friends I made here. But I promise to continue my work as a nurse whatever, wherever life takes me. You all taught me that nothing is more satisfying than helping patients. It was a pleasure to have you on staff, Mary. Good luck with a new job. I can't believe you're leaving. This is all so sudden. How are you going to get by without her, Derek? <laughs> Actually, Derek's the one reason I was a little hesitant to leave. I even spoke with my husband about it. He's kind of a piece of crap as being a doctor. I told him there was a kid here who depends on me. Yep, called it. He asked me how long I'd be working in pediatrics. Ha 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 Oh, come on. I'm not that bad. Is Nurse Fulton still here? Oh, 
Oh, hello, Dr. Hoffman. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Robert Hoffman, age 62, the director and founder of Hope Hospital. He used to be a renowned surgeon, but then retired to work in management. No, of course not. I came to say goodbye, since I won't be around tomorrow. Thank you for your many years of dedicated service. You're a fantastic nurse, probably our best. On behalf of our entire staff, I'd like to say thank you. Oh, sir, the pleasure was all mine. I wish there was some way I could thank you for this opportunity. Well, you're not going to stop nursing, are you? If you continue to help people, that will be thanks enough. Mm. Of course, sir, helping people is my life. It's just, I wish I could stay and learn from you a little longer. Don't be modest. You already know everything I could teach you. I'm afraid Dr. Castle surpassed me as a surgeon long ago. Dr. Hoffman. Good luck with your new job. Don't be a stranger, all right? At any rate, I have other matters to attend to, if you'll excuse me. I wish I could have seen Dr. Hoffman in action more often. <coughs> but he hasn't performed any operations since that incident. Derek, let's discuss the next patient. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This will be my last procedure at Hope. Don't let me down, Derek. Multiple tumors conf confirmed in the pancreas. They may lead to a loss of stamina, so immediate removal is highly recommended. Yesterday's procedure went very smoothly. I want you to handle Mr. Spence's operation today. It's another tumor excision. Just be careful. There's more than one this time. Make sure you don't miss any. This is the last time I'll be assisting you, Dr. Stiles. If you can handle this operation, I'll feel much better about leaving. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to upset you. But wake up, Dr. Stiles! The only person you should be thinking about during an operation is the patient! Do you understand? Y y yes ma'am. Let's review the main objective of today's operation. Excise and remove all tumors from the patient's pancreas. Now think back to yesterday's procedure and begin. Starting the operation. Here goes, let's begin the operation. Let's begin. Get the operation, Dr. Styles. Alright, so we need to make it clean and then oh, I missed. Stab him in the gut somewhere where we're not cutting open. Alright, yeah. remember he's inflamed, so we need an anti inflammatory. We'll use the blue file. Let's move on. So while he's done, let's move on to the tumors. Three tumors have been identified. Bam. Let's do the ultrasound. There. There's one there. There's one there. That one's probably right there. Okay. Cool. Um. supposed to do there? Oh, drain it, right. Just two more.
have to start it. See? It's simple. Alright, it's simple! It takes care of the tumors! Whoa. Well done. All right. I think we can both relax, Derek. You're doing great. Fantastic. The patient is safe. Ooh. How many cools did I get? I didn't get any cools. Are you freaking serious? Whatever. Fine. Fine game. You did a great job, Derek. It looks like I have nothing to worry about. You're going to make an excellent surgeon. Please continue using your abilities to help people of Angelus Bay. Angelus Bay. Oh, excuse me. Nurse Angie. And so we all felt you deserved a special gift of appreciation. Thank you for 18 years of dedicated service, Mrs. Fulton. I don't really know what to say. I'm a little embarrassed. Mrs. Fulton was more than a great nurse. She looked after us as well. She will be missed. Are you sure you're not glad to be free of my nagging? What are you talking about? I'm just worried Derek's going to start coming to work late again. You're the one who kept him in line, Mary. Oh, jeez. I'm standing right here, guys. You don't need to worry. I'll be fine without Mary's help. I may be young, but I'm still a doctor. That's good to hear. So, no more sobbing phone calls from you, huh? What? I wasn't crying. I'm just teasing, Derek. Man, you guys are mean to him. You've grown so much since you joined us, and I'm proud of you. Work hard, and you'll surpass even Dr. Castle one day. Don't forget that I believe in you. She isn't here yet. Is, some, is something wrong? They must be talking about my replacement. Since I'm leaving, you're going to need a new assistant. I was supposed to train her this afternoon, but HR assured me she's very reliable. I hope everything's okay. Sorry I'm late. I'm Angie Thompson, the new nurse. I'll be starting here tomorrow. It's very nice to meet you. Wow, she's a nurse? Isn't she a little too? What's that now? What? Huh? No, nothing. Pardon me. On the way here, I saw a man get hit by a car as he was crossing the street. I took him to a nearby clinic and stayed until they transferred him to St. Francis Hospital. Of course, the paperwork took forever to fill out, so yeah! Sounds like you had a rough morning. Well, don't you worry about being late. I completely understand. Excuse me, has Miss Thompson arrived yet? There's someone on the line from St. Francis Hospital. This must be about that patient. Please excuse me. She certainly is something else. Looks like I'm leaving you in capable hands. What do you think, Derek? Singing the blues. Let's go. Ah, really need a new mic holder. Good morning. Hello, Dr. Stiles. You were supposed to be here 15 minutes ago. Your patients shouldn't have to wait just because you're behind schedule. Uh, I'm sorry? Anyway, I'll call in the first one. Man, she's strict. Please have a seat, Mr. Cox. Y yo, Doc. 
During today's surgery, we'll be removing a polyp from your throat. How are you feeling? It's important for us to know about any changes to your condition. There could be problems if anything unexpected happens. I don't know. Fine, I guess. I really don't know. Huh? It's just not fair, you know? I spend years working part-time, keeping the dream alive. And now we finally land a contract with a big-time record producer. Now my throat screwed up. So what? If something goes wrong, I wasted my life? I have to work retail till I die because of this stupid polyp thing? J just trying to relax. We're hoping for the best. Oh yeah, hoping, huh? That's clearly all it takes, right? Hope. Not practice, not discipline. If you could get by on hope, I would have had a record deal years ago. Maybe Dad was right. I was stupid to think I could be a rock star. Come on, try to stay positive. You're gonna be fine, really. Sorry, Dex, Nate, Trisha. You guys fronted the money and I just ended up letting you down. I don't even think I'll be able to pay it back. I need to take your blood pressure, Mr. Cox. This way, please. Yeah, whatever. Why didn't you just tell him everything would be fine? Wait, what? Don't you even read your own notes? You knew he was nervous about this. Our job is about more than just training officers. Proper bedside manner is an essential element in the patient's recovery. Things you say directly affect these people's attitudes. Don't you get it? <laughs> yeah, I do. I hope you handle things more appropriately during surgery this afternoon. <laughs> oh, man. Polyp clusters confirmed in the trachea due to internal hemorrhaging. A hemostatic laser procedure is necessary. We should start the briefing. Let's review today's patient, Mr. Cox. He started feeling pain in his throat about a month ago. He's been coughing up blood since then and now has trouble breathing. Since Mr. Cox is a rock singer, it's likely that a polyp develop has developed due to strained bronchial tubes. Obviously, it has started to hemorrhage. We attempted to treat it with a nebulizer, but its condition is getting worse. Nothing life-threatening, but considering the patient's career, it's serious enough to warrant surgical intervention. It's still possible for him to fully recover. What's your opinion, Dr. Castle? That sounds like a good plan. Glad I thought of it. Are you ready, Dr. Stiles? This operation has three objectives. Drain the overflowing blood. Locate the source of the patient's distress and use the laser to remove it. This is a delicate operation, so we need to use the magnification tool. Remember, this is the patient's livelihood, so tread carefully. Nice work, Angie. Derek, good luck. Starting the operation. Okay, let's begin the operation. Life is in my hands. Let's begin. Decision, movement, and the utmost care, but this is a weak. I don't think styles. The outer membrane of the trachea has started to hemorrhage. That should be our focal point. It's hard to see the affected area, so we'll need to magnify it. Take the magnification tool. I'll explain how it's used. Use the magnification. A button to act. Yeah. Hemorrhaging is our problem. Once you finish working in the affected area, simply return to the mag non magnetite bleh, view. Keep these options in mind as you set up the best angle for a given task. First, let's drain the blood. Yeah. What the bleeding seems to be a small group of polyps. There's no way we can excise them, they're far too small. Use the laser. Dr. Styles. Continue to burn tissue as long as you have it activated. Applying it for extended periods will cause additional bleeding. Please be careful and only apply where necessary. Let's begin. Dr. Styles. Well, the burn away pulse without damaging nearby tissue. Capillaries in the trachea's outer membrane are damaged and have caused further bleeding. You're going to need to adjust the procedure accordingly. We'll need to apply antibiotic gel immediately after using the laser. If blood starts to collect, drain it quickly to maintain visibility. 
Stay calm, Dr. Styles. Everything's fine. Oh, the pellets have been removed. It could have gone better, but I guess it's not bad for you. Looks like there are several other polyp affected areas. We'll need to treat all of them. Yo, what is happening? Continue the treatment. Is there more? There's more? like every five minutes. How do you know that's all of them? Good work, so I've really been assigned to this inexperienced slacker? Yo, bitch. Shut up. Er, that is good job, Dr. Styles. Bitch, I got a bunch of cools. That's at least a B rank. Thank you. No mistakes, fewer than 12 blood pools, completed with 180 left and two cools. Slacker, you shut your mouth. You shut your mouth, Angela. That's enough out of you. Well, Mr. Cox, your operation was a complete success. Uh. Don't try to speak yet. Your throat needs a to rest for a few days. No worries, though. A week from now, you'll be belting out power ballads good as new. Speaking of which, how about a couple of tickets to your next concert? <laughs> how could you ask him for that? Nobody else will... A real doctor. <sighs> Thank you so much, doctor. Take care now. Well, that looks like our last walk-in for today. Angie, let's start our pre-op at around 1 o'clock, okay? Don't you think we should have examined him more carefully? There were signs of cyanosis, which could indicate asthma. If that's the case, he needs to see his physician right away. Really? I didn't think it looked like any I didn't think it looked like anything serious. You need to start acting like a real doctor, Mr. Styles. You're overreacting. I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> Multiple tumors confirmed in the small intestine, resulting in several other inflammations. Immediate removal is required. Since Dr. Castle is at a conference, I'll be briefing you today. I think you'd be briefing me even if he was here. We're extracting a stage one tumor from the patient's small intestine. So if we take it out, he should fully recover. However, his blood test results were unusual. We can ask Dr. Castle about that once he gets back. As long as I extract the tumor, the patient should be fine. That's technically correct, but I'm pretty confident about this. I've extracted tumors several times already. This will be a snap. Okay, keep the two operation objectives in mind then. Treat the inflamed epithelium in his small intestine. Excise and remove all tumors in the area. If you're ready, let's begin. Starting the operation. <laughs> let's begin the operation. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. 
Let's begin. Turn him up. What's, oh, what's going on? The entire intestinal membrane is inflamed. What's going on? Only the small intestine should be infected. Doctor, I think we need to close up the patient for re-examination. Let's continue operating, Angie. Those symptoms aren't uncommon. I understand. In that case, proceed with tumor excision. I know you've done this before, so I'll try to stay out of your way. Thank you, Angie. Proceed as normal. It is going well. Please inject the anti-inflammatory. Jane. Treatment of the visibly inflamed areas is complete, but... Must be studying the latest techniques. He's got like a million tumors in his large intestine. This is not correct. aren't stabilizing there must be something else the patient's vitals don't usually stabilize right after the operation but we need to at least check his blood test results hmm. okay what would you suggest try using the ultrasound again just to be safe doctor i don't see anything angie but i was certain Sorry about second guessing you, Doctor. Don't worry. We're both still learning from experience, right? I guess. There. The best incision suturing. Good work, Doctor. We're finished, Doctor Styles. <laughs> Operation successful. Two cools. Dr. Styles. Oh, hey, Angie. Thanks for your help in there. I'd like to have a word with you about the last operation. Hmm? Was there something wrong with my bedside manner? No, it's about the patient, actually. His white blood cell and globulin counts are rising rapidly. I also noticed inflammation along the patient's peritoneum. 
We should re-examine him immediately and consult his regular doctor. I agree with you, but I'm afraid it will have to wait until tomorrow. I'm supposed to help with the next symposium, so I'm meeting with some doctors from St. Francis to learn the ropes and everything. But... They traveled a long way to meet with me, and I can't just blow them off. We'll handle this first thing tomorrow, I promise. I promise, but... I promise, I promise. To the city walk. Too bad I have work tomorrow. I would have liked to talk a bit longer. Oh well, at least now I'm ready for that symposium thing. Hmm? Oh, my phone. Derek, where are you? The patient is in critical condition. Get back here right now. What? T taxi, take me to Hope Hospital and stamp on it. Wow. These transitions. Angie. A tumor metastasized behind his lungs, which then began swelling. It continued to fester until 30 minutes ago when the tumor ruptured. The patient is in shock and suffering acute peritonitis. The other doctors are operating him as we speak. Follow me, Mr. Stiles. You need to see the consequences of your carelessness! Alright, no operation this time, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. More voice acting. Episode 7, Downpour. I understand you didn't have much information to base a decision on. And I do admit that the tumor was difficult to see from the x-ray. However, the laboratory left you several memos about the patient. I understand they pointed out his extremely high readings. More than that, you dumped your responsibilities onto a nurse immediately, following a very delicate operation. I wasn't... I mean... Miss Thompson, what are you? Please excuse me for interrupting. Dr. Hoffman, I understand this is a little rude, but I have to say something. What is it? It's about the negligent attitude Mr. Stiles has displayed thus far. I warmed him about this patient at least three times, but he said that there were important personal matters he had to take care of. Then he just walked out without another word. Mr. Stiles, maybe you didn't harm the patient directly, but... HOW CAN YOU WORK UNDER A DOCTOR WHO DOESN'T EVEN TRY TO ACT LIKE ONE?! IT DOESN'T MATTER HOW SMALL OR GROUNDLESS A SUSPICION MIGHT BE! THE PATIENTS ARE DEPENDING ON YOU TO TAKE CARE OF THEM! WHY DID YOU BECOME A DOCTOR DO YOU EVEN KNOW?! I... that is... I... YOU DON'T DESERVE TO BE HERE! YOU'RE NOT A REAL DOCTOR! <gasps> The city walk, I'm gonna go mope in traffic. <gasps> oh, I'm really screwed up. I I ignored a patient. I was trying my best. I didn't think it was anything serious. But a patient almost died and it was all my fault. Being called Dr. Styles doesn't make me a good doctor. What was I thinking? I'm no doctor, none if I keep making mistakes like that. Uh oh, it looks like rain. We're up here too, we need to get all our displays inside. Rain, maybe that'll help calm me down. It couldn't make things any worse. S sir, it looks like you're completely soaked. Did you come from a hospital? You might want to head back pretty soon. They don't want me there. I'm apparently useless as a doctor. Hey, yeah, it's me. You're never gonna believe what I just saw. There's a doctor and he's soaking wet like an idiot. <laughs> huh? Well, you can guess if you want. Nope, it's even better. There was this crazy accident on Walnut between a truck and an SUV. It was nuts. The drivers flew into the street and, huh? No, it really happened. An accident on Walnut? 
They're gonna be taken to our trauma ward. But Dr. Castle's out of town. And there aren't any emergency doctors on call! Life or death. I was right. Then there's no time to lose. Where are the accident victims, Angie? Dr. Siles, the patient. He was suffering cardiac arrest and, and I couldn't resuscitate him. The other nurses are busy and with Dr. Castle gone, I can't. What am I supposed to do? The patient's going to die, but I can't. I can't even. Calm down, Angie. Take me to the OR. You not a real nurse. How could you not save her? This person. <laughs> okay. Patient suffered cardiac arrest as a result of the car accident. Multiple lacerations of the epithelium and problems in the abdomen. What's the situation? The ambulance brought him here as soon as they could. His heart isn't beating. I tried reviving him, but... Angie. What do I do? I need help. I... I... Angie! <laughs> Dr. Stiles. The only person who needs help is the patient. And we're the ones who are going to help him. It's up to us and only us. We're going to save him. I can't do this without you, Angie. I want to save his life. Pretend this is a normal procedure. Calm down. Think things through. First we need a pulse. We have to get a pulse. Understood. I will save this patient. Let's begin the operation. He's flatlining. We have to do something. We need to recover his pulse. Let me explain how to use a defibrillator. Move the paddles toward the patient and place them on his chest. How do I... How? Oh. Be careful. No, let's explain how to release the shock. Hold the paddles in position. Keep an eye on meter display and level of electric charge. You see a green area on the voltage gauge? Activate the shock when the meter reaches that area on the gauge. The closer to this reading you get, the more effective the shock will be. Now you need to know how to activate the defibrillator. Once it's moved toward the patient, press B and Z simultaneously. Wait. Okay. Do you understand? Play these shots by pressing both buttons. Watch the gauge! We need to get a pulse! Don't fucking kill us! Alright, we got a pulse! We did it! Vitals are still below 30. He's not in the clear yet. That sounds more like the Angie I know. Dr. Styles, are we going to save him? Of course we are. Understood. First, let's take care of those lacerations. So we can continue the procedure. at survival. I don't know what to do! Either way, I won't blame you. This is your decision. But if I'm going to do anything else... I believe in you. You have to be careful. 
Whoops! Oh my gosh, fuck off. Where? This must mistake. Slippery cardiac arrest again. We need to revive him. Fuck! We have a pulse! What? How could something like that be lodged in the pericardium? Please extract it, but be careful. I think he's gonna make it. This can't be happening. This is bad. Don't Damn. Die on me. Don't die on me. I summon Satan. What? Gee, he sutured the myocardium in a split second. I I think we're finished. Let's close him up. I can feel him slipping away. I was so scared, Doctor. I froze, and all I could think about was running away. But you didn't worry at all. You stood your ground and did what had to be done. You, you are a real a doctor. Well done, Doctor Styles. Thank you, Doctor Styles. Operation successful. The patient is saved. I got eight cools. That's right. I'm a real doctor. Eat it, Angie. I'm a real doctor. Real doctors get C's. They don't get A's. Or S's. I've never felt that way before. I think I'm starting to understand what it means. His condition stabilized for now. Let's keep an eye on him. Yes, doctor. We need to contact the other doctors and... I'm way ahead of you. Most of the off-duty staff have agreed to come in. I also called Dr. Castle. Good work. Thank you. You should get some rest. We were in surgery for a long time. Yeah. If it's okay with you, I think I'll do that. Angie. Yes? Everything you said this morning was true. Hmm. But I'm going to stay here as a doctor. I'm going to try harder. I'll become a better surgeon and make you proud, Dad. If that's the case, stop coming into work late and don't leave without doing your paperwork. I'll do my best. And there's one other thing. Huh? Please try to be more presentable. I shouldn't have to worry about you being embarrassed. I shouldn't have to worry about being embarrassed to work with you. <laughs> I'll be more careful. <sighs> okay, I'm taking a nap. Wake me up if anything changes. <sighs> I understand. Have a good rest, Dr. Styles. <laughs> Chapter 2. Mr. Seeds? What is this? Z. St. Francis Hospital. So number Z1. St. Francis Hospital. Conference room. The patient, Alan Chambers, is suffering a committed... A, it's not committed. A, commu, a comminuted fracture in his right forearm. Comminuted? He was rushed here as soon as the injury occurred, thanks to a nurse who witnessed it. Judging by the x-ray, this one could give us some trouble. But I'm sure Dr. Weaver will be able to fix him up good as new. I appreciate the confidence, but you know this is no big deal. I haven't let a patient down yet, have I? Nozomi Weaver, age 29, a Japanese surgeon who came to America on an exchange program. Since transferring from her original hospital in Okinawa, she's gained quite a reputation. Alan Chambers. Isn't he the famous screenwriter? I think it's the same guy. It would certainly explain the media circus gathering outside. Hey, maybe they'll want to interview us! Or Dr. Weaver, anyway. She's probably the most photogenic doctor here. I definitely don't need that kind of attention. 
And if you're looking for a press conference, the head surgeon is welcome to take my place. You're too modest, Dr. Weaver. She's really put our hospital on the map, though. We have patients coming from all over. I'd say that exchange program was the best thing that happened to St. Francis. I'm surprised your hospital was willing to let you go, Doctor. You're giving me too much credit. I haven't even been here for a full year. We're getting a little sidetracked, I think. Let's proceed with the operation. Good luck, Dr. Weaver. Now I just need to avoid unnecessary media attention. I still can't believe they want me operating out in the open like this. Didn't they learn their lesson in Okinawa? Well, this is America, not Okinawa, so... Comminuted fracture in patient's radius bone. There also seems to be internal hemorrhaging. Treat bleeding, then rebuild the broken bone. Let's see. Time of dictation, 3.48 p.m. The patient's name is Alan Chambers. He has a serious fracture in his right arm. As for the x-ray results, fragments of the bone seem to be scattered, and I see hemorrhaging. That said, I will be approaching this operation with three objectives. Collect fragments of his radius and ulna. Set the radius properly for healing. Return the fragments to their original location. And rebuild the patient's radius and ulna. I anticipate a smooth procedure. I'm starting the operation. It's time to get started. Finger guns. Bang, bang. Boop, 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 boop. Let's begin. Located primarily in the patient's forearm. Good. Opening him up. Hmm. Pretty bad. I need to drain it. Careful now. Next, leave it to me. Getting them bones. I wish the original positions in order to rebuild his arm. Wait a minute. Like his ulna is twisted in the wrong direction. Forceps to move it back into place. Move bone fragments where they belong. Rotate these pieces before they fit properly. I see. Yo. Oh, that's not right. It's all down. Gotta go this way, right? Like, nah. Oh, it goes there. Okay. Well, I goofed on that one pretty hard. Da -da -da -da. Uh, I'm gonna do it like. <sighs> Something isn't right. Thought I found all the fragments, but. The radius still isn't connecting properly. There's probably still a fragment I haven't found yet. Use the ultrasound, I should be able to find it. Here's where you're hiding. Seems to be all of them. Should apply some antibiotic gel to make sure the area is healing properly. Done. Radius bone has been reformed. I anticipate a quick recovery. complete. 
Best doctor ever. GG, thanks. GG, easy. At Francis Hospital? Conference room. Another amazing operation, Dr. Weaver. I think we all learned a thing or two, Chuckle. Well then, if you'll excuse me. See you tomorrow. Interesting. I always thought American doctors were more concerned about golf than their patients. But everyone here is so kind, they accepted me as one of their own immediately. Only because they know the truth. They don't know the truth. Hmm? A phone call. Oh, it's them. This is Weaver. A procedure on Sunday? It's kind of sudden, don't you think? <sighs> Not that I can refuse or anything. Yeah, I'll be there. been streaming for Ugh. about an hour man I want to take like five minutes to just breathe for a minute because that was a lot of talking yeah let me let's enjoy some nice music while I drink some drink something real quick keep voice acting like it's fun but uh there's a lot of chapters apparently um. <coughs> okay um is actually telling me how many chapters there are. Uh, 134 operations, but that's if you do every file, or every difficulty level, which we are not doing. I will finish I'll finish normal mode. I will see if there's extras on hard. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll get the, the thing set up open this real quick 134 divided by 3 44 so that probably means there's 8-ish story chapters on oh, they get the hard mode hold up how did that happen yeah there we go um that means that there's probably <sighs> means there's probably four uh, all right we'll do another we'll do another uh chapter another full chapter so we'll do two i'm gonna actually hold off on reading from now on on voice acting because like am i no nah, we'll keep doing it 
what the heck happened during the last operation? It almost felt like it was like time was slowing down. Am I losing it? I knew exactly what needed to be done, but I'm not sure how I knew that. Ugh. Now I'm just talking in circles. I need to sit down and figure. Derek. Pay attention. Huh? I I mean I was. Stop daydreaming and start talk start taking your job seriously. I'm sorry. We need to have a meeting about Mr. Pratt's operation. Angie, can you handle prep for that? Yes, of course, Doctor. Let's go over the procedure for Mr. Pratt's operation. He's been suffering from dizziness and nausea recently. Tests show that wastes accumulated in his spleen and are now blocking blood vessels there. Today's objective is to remove the buildup of thrombi. The contrast medium was administered 30 minutes ago in IV. Because of that, you should be able to find the waste material using ultrasound. Once it shows a shadow, try clipping near that area with a forceps. It should stop moving. Make your incision, then drain the area. This is a sensitive operation, so you'll need to make sure proper use of magnification. Remember, the objective is remove all thrombi in the vessels. That is all. If further waste blockage occurs, the patient's vitals will drop. Remember to stay calm and keep it steady. Let's begin the operation. Let's begin the operation. Contrast medium isn't working well. We've confirmed the problem area. Or is working well. The threat by causing the vessel blockage are originating here. Work carefully. Use the magnifying tool to view the area. Magnification successful. Please continue. I love how we zoomed in like an inch. Doctor. We need to use ultrasound to, in to find the thrombi. There. Then forceps. Drain the area. Oh. Treatment complete. Okay. Uh Let's use some magic juice here real quick. All right. Um Don't you want that? to move too. Doctor, this is bad. Concentrate. Everything's slowing down. I did it again. Doctor, what just... No, no sound by detected. Treatment is complete. Suture the incision and the operation will be finished. Good. Nice work, Dr. 
Styles. Amazing work, Dr. Styles. That was impressive. No mistakes. It's funny, I thought I did make mistakes, but oh well. You might actually be a pretty good surgeon, Dr. Styles. Huh? You were practically a different person in there. Just like yesterday. Come to think of it, it did kind of feel like I was somewhere else. If you were always that focused in the OR, I wouldn't have to worry as much. So you worry about me? I definitely worry about your patients. <sighs> Angie, I'd like to review the footage of today's operation. Of course, sir. I'll bring it to you later. If we're right, then we should be able to tell from watching the tape. Master surgery. Let's go. I called you here today to warn you about something. Dr. Castle tells me you may have shown potential for the healing touch. Healing touch? You don't know? No. Doctors with the healing touch can cure incurable diseases. They can even save patients who come in within an inch of death. I don't know how long this gift has existed, but the Greeks believed such doctors were descendants of Asclepius. You mean the god of medicine? Me? Those with the healing touch have certain special qualities. The keenest judgment, unbreakable focus, and unmatched surgical skill. Haven't you noticed any changes during your operations? Well, sometimes it starts to feel like time is moving much more slowly than usual. Hmm, that must be a result of your extraordinary concentration. Definitely marks you as capable of the healing touch. So I have all those powers? You need to forget about them. Those things are unnecessary. What? If you pursue this, yes, you will become an unparalleled surgeon. But are you prepared for the pain that would bring you? Derek, a doctor's hands are heavy with responsibility. Patients depend on us. They put their lives in those hands of ours. Can you imagine how heavy that burden would be with a healing touch? There aren't many doctors who can endure such a weight. I'm only telling you this for your own good. Forget about that power and be a normal doctor. You'll never be happy otherwise. For my own good? Think of it this way. Right now, you're standing at a large door, knocking. If you continue to knock, that door will eventually open. But you can also turn your back on it and it would stay closed. Why not take a vacation? Get your mind off surgery for a while. But I... Trust me, it's for your own good. <laughs> Striving for Asclepius. <sighs> oh. What's wrong, Derek? Shouldn't you be checking on your patients? Dr. Castle, do you think I should stop trying to improve as a doctor? So, you spoke with Hoffman. I was hoping the news about your abilities might motivate him to start operating again. Huh? Why would it do that? Back when the director was still operating on patients, he named that skill the Healing Touch and accepted its gifts. What? He has it too? 
But then something happened. He hasn't operated on anyone since. All because of one mistake. Can you imagine how heavy that burden would be with the healing touch? There aren't many doctors who can endure such a weight. Can I really do it? Can I master the healing touch? Well, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not the one with your abilities. But I know that if you intend to use this power to help people, you need to take command of it. Take command? Yes, you can't be halfway with something like this. You need to be a top and not a bottom. One simple mistake changed the director's entire life. He delved too far into something he couldn't understand. I think you can learn a lot from the director's mistake. If you can't control this power, then it's going to cost you. So, do you think I can do it? Your skill seems to involve focus, so try to concentrate on that. Once you adjust, I'm sure you'll be able to make this decision for yourself. I can't fully understand the healing touch because I'm not you or Dr. Hoffman. In the end, nobody's going to be able to make this decision for you. Good luck, Derek. I need to focus on concentration. My dad always used to say I could never concentrate on anything. He told me to imagine one shape like a star or a triangle, and focus on that. I'm pretty sure he just made that up, but it definitely came in handy for exams. Maybe that could help now. I'll imagine a star. I just have to relax, focus, and concentrate. Personal training exercise. Gain focus and practice superhuman concentration for self-betterment. Okay, how should I do this? First, I'll just recall what happened during that operation. Now, I'll visualize a star. Concentrate. Concentrate. Okay, I can do it. Starting the operation. Let's begin the operation. Operation. I don't know if I have to talk during this. Healing touch. The power of Asclepius. I can do this. First, I'll recall the procedure. I'm looking at the patient. Let's see. I think I tensed my index finger. Tense my in... I gotta put this down. Sorry, folks. Index finger. Right. Concentrate. What else do I do with my hands? Tense up my other hand. It's hard to concentrate when I'm so tense. I know. Maybe if I draw a star in the Air. This, this is all wrong. That's not it. I'm too loose. I think I test my index. Concentrate. This is some shit. I'm doing it. Z button. Concentrate. B button. I don't know what I'm 
missing here? I don't understand. This is all wrong. This is all wrong. One more time. Almost. I was so close, I could feel it. Okay, try again. are burning. I need to keep at this, though. Okay, for real this time. Concentrate. Concentrate! One more Once more, healing touch. Here we go! That's it. Just a little more. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Exactly like before! I have the healing touch! I have it! Maybe I overdid it. Gave myself a headache. Alright, so it turns out I had to let go of the B button in order for it to actually happen. So, I need to remember that. Three skilled, two passable. B rank. I think I'm getting the hang of it. I might be able to handle the healing touch after all. Awakening. That concludes our meeting. Please review the information again on your own. We should move on. Just move on to the surgical conference now to save time. Those doctors involved, please stick around. We're starting, Doctor. Hmm. Doctor Stiles, pay attention. Huh? What? Oh, sorry. I guess I didn't hear you. Is everything all right? You've been staring at that X-ray for a long time. Uh, I was just going over today's operation again in my mind. Anyway, let's get the conference started, huh? Hang on a sec. We're back. A dinosaur story. So, uh... So that was Pepper. Uh, we have a little kitten. She was slumping up against the door or something and being obnoxious. Like the cats always are. He's been spacing out a lot lately. At least he's concentrating hard on something, I guess. Boo -da -boo. Multiple aneurysms have formed on the surface of the large intestine. Requires sedative treatment and suturing of all affected vessels. Today's patient is Mr. Kovac, who was carried in this morning. 
he's currently not doing very well. Tess showed a number of aneurysms near his large intestine. Some of them have ruptured, and there is risk of anemia. We need to perform a laparotomy and get those aneurysms under control. The objective of this operation is treat the aneurysms on the outer membrane of that of the patient's large intestine. That should be all. First, inject a sedative into the swollen vessel to reduce its size. Exercise the problem area and suture the vessel closed. You'll need to use magnification again to ensure your accuracy. Derek, concentrate on the patient. Don't worry about anything else. Okay. Let's begin the operation. Let's begin. The anti-hypertensive is in effect, but the aneurysms could still burst. We need to hurry, Dr. Styles. Stop talking to me. Hurry is disinfected, okay? Doctor, that lump on that vessel is the aneurysm. Try magnifying that area. We're treating an artery, so be careful. Sort of avoid a rupture. Inject sedative. Well done. Now's your chance. Doctor, a bit for cut, but there's a lot of blood in the way, so let's drain it out. Forceps. Perform anastomosis. The manual connects one side to the other. Boop. Please be careful, doctor. Now suture it quickly. Good work. The has been treated. We can finally relax. Let's close them up. Uh -huh. The air is in danger of becoming an aneurysm. Uh, what did I do first? Sedative. Cut it, grab it, then we drain it, then, then we sense. grab it, and then we say Oh my goodness. Uh Doctor Good work. I think it's settled down for the time being. We should wait a moment to be safe before we close them up. Th this isn't good. Maybe your ability. You doctor, doctor! Vitals dropping. Please be careful, doctor. Operation failed because I'm stupid. You're done here. I'll have to finish it. What are you gonna do? A few days later, Derek Styles mysteriously disappeared without saying a word to anyone. The burden of the patient's lives turned out to be more than he could bear. After his final operation, most people would agree that Dr. Styles had no business treating patients in the first place. That's kind of harsh. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do over.
blah 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 Let's begin the operation. Okay. Try again. Please be careful, Doctor. Maybe your ability. Do doctor! How do I do a fucking star? Please be please be careful, Doctor. I just, I couldn't draw a star, I don't know what happened. Whatever. So, I understand you figured out how to control the healing touch. Make sure you don't rely on it too much. You need to develop your basic skills, too. Huh? What the? I know it won't be easy. But you didn't take this job because... Everything's going black. Dirk, are you even listening? 
Derek, what's wrong? Paying the price. Five thousand dollars is the price. Forget about that power. Forget about that power. But I... Are you prepared for the pain that it would bring you? I became a doctor so that I could help people. And if it costs you your life, you'd give up your own happiness? I don't know. But I do know that people need my help. And I want to help them. Yo, birds. Well, where am I? It's the ceiling? What am I doing here? Dr. Styles! Angie, what happened? After Mr. Kovac's surgery, you just collapsed. You've been asleep for three days. Wh what? Three days? What about my patients? I have operations scheduled. Already taken care of, Derek. I called in the other doctors. But that's in the past. We need to discuss how you're going to proceed from here. Okay. Derek, I forbid you from using the healing touch like that. I didn't even use it! But why would you? That ability puts a tremendous amount of physical strain on your body. It's too risky. What if you collapsed in the middle of a procedure? But without my healing touch, Mr. Kovac might have died, even though I didn't use it. Exactly. That is why you mustn't abandon the healing touch. I'd advise you to use it only when absolutely necessary. After all, you shouldn't be relying solely on the healing touch anyway. Developing your natural skills as a surgeon is far more important. We can't assume the healing touch was the only reason Kovac survived. If you want to help people, then focus on strengthening your natural abilities. I understand. Take it slowly. I'm sure the power inside you will find its way out. Become the best surgeon you can, and one day you'll inherit the full heritage of Asclepius. Y yes, sir! Just let me die. Ba bum 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 Doctor, an emergency patient was carried in. Vitals at 60, CS is 300. She's in shock and losing blood fast. Call the rest of the staff. We need to operate immediately. Angie, get the patient in the OR. Derek, you handle the surgery. I'm on it. Ba -ba -da -ba. Several bleeding lacerations found in the right lung. The patient's vitals are unstable, necessitating extreme caution. The patient's a 17-year-old female. Her case history is unknown. We found massive bleeding in her thoracic cavity. Derek, you need to perform a lobectomy immediately. This operation has one objective. Save the patient! Treat all injuries within the thoracic cavity. We'll proceed from there. Drain the blood first if it's a large laceration. After that, use the forceps to close the area, then suture it. Just be sure to drain any blood before moving on with the operation. Hurry, Derek! Let's get started. Let's begin the operation. much time. Oh shit. What the? How could something like this happen? But there aren't any external wounds. This is impossible. No, it doesn't matter what caused it. We need to focus on stopping that bleeding. Begin treating her. Suture them would be far too dangerous. Try using forceps to close the wounds before you start suturing. Good work. You have to be careful. Shut up. Doctor. Vitals 
dropping. Quick, use the magic green liquid stat. Let's get her back up. Cool. Everything's been sutured. She's going to make it. I hate to think what would have happened if she had if she'd arrived later. Close up the patient, doctor. Cool. The operation was a success. Good work, Dr. Styles. I want you to just take a second to look here. Take a second to look here. This freaking cat is right in the way of my screen. She's blocking me. Thank you, Nezzy. You big fatty. And now the webcam's all hosed. Great. You did well, Derek. Max chain over 10. Less than two hemorrhages. Wound did not reopen. You st it's still a C? What are you looking at? Hang on. I'm bugging out over something. What? What is it? What? Go get it. Go get it. What is it? <sighs> Can't worry about nothing. Yes, I grabbed a lid of something to bash someone's face in on the off chance there was an intruder, but there obviously isn't one because my cat's just paranoid, and so am I. Where and what did those injuries come from? I don't know. It'll probably take some time to figure out. She'll be hospitalized for a few days, so let's try to keep an eye on her. Did you notice those cuts along the girl's wrists? Yeah, they looked recent. I'd say her real illness is deeper than we thought. It's depression. If that's the case, I don't think we're finished seeing complications. Just let me die. Yeah, everything is fine right now. Get away! I never asked you to save me! Leave me alone! Please calm down, Miss Reed. It's alright. When I passed out, I could feel it. My chest was on fire. I was finally going to be free. Why did you bring me back? I didn't want to live! Why would you want to die? You're still young. You have your whole life ahead of me? Yeah! There's something to look forward to, huh? How come everyone says that? My life sucks! I'm tired of all this pain! I'm not pretty enough to date the popular guys. I'm too fat! My mom called me a failure yesterday because I might not even graduate. Is that a life you'd want? I'm never going to be happy. That all depends on... Depends on my attitude? What a joke! A positive outlook won't just magically solve all my problems. Then maybe you should die. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, Angie, calm down. There are patients here who have to fight just to breathe properly. Every day somebody... Every day somebody dies after a long and painful struggle to hold on. 
I'm sorry we saved you. Go end your life for all I care. Damn, Angie. I know you did your best, Doctor, but I'm afraid it was a wasted effort. Stop talking like that, Angie. I have other things to attend to. Damn, bitch. Calm down. Hmm. Glad she left. I'm sorry you had I'm so I'm sorry you had to waste your time operating on me. Helping someone is never a waste of time. Just leave me alone. I don't blame that nurse for hitting me. I hate me too. I'm not going anywhere. You're still sick. What kind of surgeon are you then? I thought you fixed me. It's not that kind of sickness. A doctor's job is about more than just physical illnesses. Nurse Angie taught me that. <gasps> You're sick in the head. When I was little, I had a cat named Tama. We were playing one day, and he ran out into the street. I wasn't fast enough to do anything. A car hit him, and I blamed myself. I decided it was my fault Tama died. I really thought I had killed my cat. It was all I could think about. I told my mother I did a terrible thing, and I wanted to die. What happened then? I died. No, she slapped me. Hard. Mom told me Tama would be ashamed of me, and that she was too. But she also said that I was the one who should be most ashamed of myself. She said that to you? Who'd you grow up with, Linda? Huh? Do you have any siblings, or what about pets? Just my parents and my friends at school, I guess. Could you look one of those people in the eye and tell them you wanted to die? No way, of course not. That's why I want to be left alone. Then hold this. A mirror? Look at that girl there and say, I want to die. <gasps> I, I want sob. I couldn't do it either. Now, tell her you're sorry. I think she deserves an apology. <gasps> I'm sorry. Sob, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Stop worrying about other people and start making that girl happy. Don't work hard in school for your mom's sake. Do it because you'll learn more and become a better person. Don't let other people decide whether you're whether or not you're happy. Find things you enjoy and do them. It might not make you popular, but you'll like yourself a lot more. And you aren't too fat. I've seen your charts, remember? Your mother sounds like a smart lady. Really? She could be pretty weird sometimes, but then she'd say, I may be weird, but think of all the stories you'll have to tell one day. That's interesting. <coughs> uh, sorry. I guess I got a little carried away, you think? Really, though, she's great. I should let you rest now. I think I'm gonna take a nap. That's a good idea. Sorry for talking so much. Next time, I'll... Thank you. Hmm? You're a good doctor. <laughs> what the fuck? Ugh. All right. Oh, 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 nope. Go back. Uh, no. I somehow bumped the C button and made this, or the Z button, and made it tougher. I need to read on normal difficulty. Whew. Time for a break. I'll go get us some coffee. Thanks. That's a great idea. I passed by Linda's read Linda Reed's room on the way here, but Is something wrong? Her parents were there. All three of them started crying and apologizing all at once. It seems like a lot more was going on than we thought. School, her father's job. Were you eavesdropping? 
Hmm. Well, I was curious. I didn't hear anything worth dying over, though. Everyone worries about that stuff during high school, you know? I think we all handle our problems in different ways. But I'm glad her family came to visit her. Surgeons aren't really equipped to heal psychological wounds. Don't sell yourself short. <laughs> I can only try. Anyway, if her family knows about it, then they can help her. Yeah, I think she'll be fine. That girl's lucky she was brought to this hospital, though. Huh? Why? Because she got to have you as a doctor. Well, this is only a rumor, but I hear there's a death doctor. A what doctor? Euthanasia. Da, da, da. If that doctor had been treating her when she asked to die? Death doctor, huh? I really can't understand why anyone would want to die. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> Please, let me live. Derek, we just received some strange results back on Linda Reed. Do they explain the bleeding in her lungs? I don't think it's directly related, but they found extremely high levels of sipohedrine. 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 Spirohedrine. In her blood. Spiro. What's that? It's a new antihistamine, Doctor. They're usually used to treat allergies. I know what antihistamines do, but why didn't she tell us she was on medication? Because she wasn't. Drugs involving ciprohedrine are still in clinical trial. Also, our tests indicated 24 times the suggested. Hello, wow, fuck. How is she not dead 24 times? Damn! That's a lot of that's a lot of drugs. <laughs> Side effects from overdose include headaches and emotional distress. In extreme cases, the mood swings are serious enough to prompt suicide. That explains her death wish. It may have contributed, but I doubt that was the primary cause. Still, I've never heard of ciprohydrine being synthesized within the body. Whatever's causing it might be the source of those lacerations. D Doctor! What is it? Reed's condition is getting worse. She's complaining about excruciating chest pain. What? What? It hurts. Linda. Doctor, I... I want to live! I want to live, Doctor! Please! Derek, we're operating now. Angie, alert the staff. Hurry! Her blood pressure is decreasing at a frightening rate. We suspect hemorrhaging in her lungs again. There has to be some explanation for why these lacerations are occurring. Until we figure out what that is, there's not a lot we can do. You should have two objectives during this operation. Treat any bleeding injuries within the thoracic cavity. Discover the source of the lacerations. I'll be working as your assistant. Stay calm, Derek. I will save this patient. No, she wants to live. I have to save her.
Proceed as normal. I don't have any idea why this happened. What's our next step? We need to close her up and have a closer examination later. Nice job, Derek. What is that? What, is that? what the? What the hell's going on? Doctor, try using ultrasound. What? Did you see that? It was moving. Derek, treat it like a tumor. Excise it and remove it right away. It's gone. Using the laser was the right decision. Good thinking. Would have been a bad idea to remove that thing alive. More of them. We'll have to burn them all. What are you going to do? I will save this patient. All right, so I got to cut the things first. That's what I wasn't doing. I got to cut them. We killed her already. What the hell? Okay, thank you, game. Wow, it was that low, huh? Dang. So dumb. Alright. I'm 
will save this patient. I will save this patient. Could it have been guilt? Oh. What's going on? Why did they both stop talking? Oh, uh, Derek, continue. Please suture the incision. Nice work, Dr. Styles. Linda should finally be able to recover. Thank you, Dr. Styles. Max chain over 40. No wound reopened. No mistakes. This is an A rank. Hell yeah. I'd like to remind everyone that the details of this operation should be considered strictly confidential. Bring Linda Reed's medical files to my office immediately. I will provide updates when appropriate. That's all for today. Doctor, could that have been guilt? How do you know about that? I don't know much. It was mentioned in my father's research. When did your father come across something like guilt? Well, he was a researcher. Other than that, I don't really know. Give me some time to examine the situation. Until then, don't mention guilt to anyone, understand? Yes, sir. What the hell is guilt?
Caduceus. I'm here. Please come in. Pardon me, but why was I called to your office? Why don't you have a look at this examination report first? Who's this for? Linda Reed. What do these headings mean? I don't recognize them. Positive chiral reaction. Guilt positive. Spectral analysis G1R? Those tests are beyond our capabilities, so we enlisted help from an outside organization. In the last few years, a bizarre disease with varying symptoms has been reported. In several isolated cases, the two things they had in common? Each victim's body turned against itself, and they all died. Because of that, we believe each subject was infected with guilt. Gangliated eutrophin immunolatency toxin. Then, you think Reed's illness was... Ex exactly. Le Linda Reed is a guilt victim. I'm surprised you were able to treat her without the proper resources. It was a difficult operation, but I wanted to save her. Well, that decision may have changed your life. The organization we mentioned before has requested that you join them. Well, what? Why me? Your healing touch ability allowed you to successfully cure a guilt victim. No, it didn't! That magic green vial stuff did. What organization is this, anyway? They're an arm of the World Health Organization that specializes in exterminating intractable diseases that threaten mankind. They're called Caduceus. Caduceus? I remember seeing them listed in essays on cancer and AIDS treatments. Aren't they the ones who eradicated the TFTA influenza last year? Caduceus wants me? What are you going to do, Derek? You've been offered a chance to work at the forefront of modern medicine. Well, I mean, it's an honor. But it's also sudden. I'm not really sure what to do. I mean, it changed my whole life. You don't need to decide right away. Just remember that this is a choice, not an order. The only reason I'm telling you this is because an old friend asked me to. To be honest... I'm against you joining Caduceus. What? Why? I don't think a research laboratory is the right environment for you. Didn't you say you wanted to help patients face to face? That's true. You should probably see this as well. A letter. Kiriaki, Sunday. Death is denied those who seek it, though it be their destiny. Ugh. They search for it like treasure, but the modern age conceals it. What's this supposed to mean? It arrived shortly after Linda Reed was hospitalized. We don't know who sent it. Supposedly, these letters arrive shortly before guilt does. Huh? That means guilt doesn't occur naturally, which means it could be some kind of man-made virus. The World Health Organization is considering it terrorist activity. What? Someone is creating guilt and releasing it into society. We don't have any leads as to who or why. Almost as if it's meant to confuse us. The UN even created a new term to describe it. Medical terrorism. Caduceus is anticipating a large-scale guilt outbreak. And they need skilled doctors to be ready for it. <coughs> Hopefully now you see the stakes involved in this. Think it over. Don't make your decision lightly. Fuck me. Alright. I need to be done. My throat is killing me. I cannot continue doing this. So, we're gonna call it the good. Uh, I'll see if I can stream tomorrow if my throat's not dead. Um, 
I'm going to drink a ton of water. And yeah. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed the uh, the acting attempts. And uh, catch you when my throat feels better. Anyway, see ya.